how do you read Harrison? This is one of the most common questions which has been asked and confused by students from undergraduation. I personally have been confused about this question right from my undergraduation. I have done my postgraduate in MD General Medicine. It took me a lot of time in figuring out the best method to reach and uh, best method to read Harrison's. First, uh, we'll first start with people who should read Harrison. That should be the first thing. It is not every medical student reading Harrison completely is not a, is is not an essential. First, all the postgraduates of general medicine, it is essential to read Harrison during your three years of residency. And again, it is a lifelong learning process. You will continue to keep on updating, but it is essential that you read Harrison in your first three in the three year internship uh, residency period. Secondly, all the other allied specialties who are planning to do a super speciality. Recently, NB had made an announcement that all the super specialty examinations will be conducted. The medical super specialties will be done in the general medicine pattern. So it is essential that you read Harrison textbook of internal medicine to have an edge over the others. Thirdly, the other postgraduates who are planning to do a super uh, MRCP uh, or some other foreign degrees again. Um, Harrison textbook of internal medicine is an essential one which helps in better preparations. So first uh, we will start with how should an undergraduate approach general medicine. It is, it is not imperative that an undergraduate reads Harrison cover to cover. It is not possible and it is not advisable because uh, as an undergraduate you must approach Harrison very smartly and only for the important topics. Uh, you can have a, you should always have a fixed target before reading Harrison whether the, your target is clearing the final MBBS examination if your target is to help it in your uh, next or need PG examination or uh, if, whether it should help you to get uh, good knowledge if you're reading for knowledge then it's your own wish but if for the other two indications you should go definitely go for the high yield okay uh, now uh, how does how should an undergraduate approach general medicine it is basically he has to answer five questions the first one will be what is the disease suppose let's say an example of pheochromocytoma first you should know what is pheochromocytoma pheochromocytoma means a tumor arising from the sympathetic uh, so sympathetic ganglia or from the adrenal medulla uh, it is a tumor so this tumor can produce the uh, adrenal the hormones like adrenaline noradrenaline and dopamine into the systemic circulation and these hormones produce the effect so this is what is the disease this is the first thing you must know secondly uh, you must know what are the causes for this disease in case of pheochromocytoma it can be because of genetic causes uh, sdhd mutation von hippel and multiple causes so the causes of the disease you should know that the third one will be the symptomatology uh, the clinical features both the symptoms and signs symptoms what are the symptoms the patient presents and what are the signs you can elicit to identify these patients and fourth one will be the investigation what are the possible investigations which you can do to confirm your diagnosis you should have a clinical suspicion based on a clinical feature to confirm the diagnosis you should do the clinical investigation and finally will be the treatment at an undergraduate standard so what are the drugs or what are the surgery or what are the procedures that can be done the, these are the five things you must know what is the disease what are the causes what are the clinical features how do you investigate and how do you treat any topic in medicine this if you are able to answer these five questions it is uh, you are, uh, it is enough for an undergraduate standard um, it, uh, so how should you read the book coming directly into the topic how do you want to read this book Firstly, before approaching any topic in Harrison, it is imperative that you have some basic idea about the topic. Uh, by basic idea, I mean you should have a broad overview. Because if you go, if you are reading on Harrison straight away, if you take the book and if you read, you will be lost in the intricate details. There will be a lot of intricacies. So it is important you have this broad picture. So how do you have this broad picture? It is important you can get it by either um, seeing a patient. That is the best way to get this broad idea. You can see a patient in your wards or outpatients. You can get an idea of this disease and you can go back and read. That is the best method. Or you can have a uh, YouTube video. There have been wide source of videos, some other, any other form of lectures. Uh, they can help in getting some knowledge of this disease. Should, uh, that can uh, be done. 
or thirdly you can read some case reports the live case reports of that particular disease and that is widely available in internet okay first you should have a basic idea and secondly will uh, going reading the text it is important you read what is essential is the most important you should uh, trim out the fat the pathogenesis detailed pathogenesis not is needed uh, the genetics drugs and the mutations all these things are not high yield so they can be avoided you have to go for the most important one that is the clinical features start with the clinical features go to the investigations go to the treatment then then come back with all the images and the illustrations which has been given that is very important images in harrison has a high yield if you are preparing for both need super speciality or for a need post graduation these images should be done then you have to come back to the uh, introductions and all the other courses everything can be done as, uh, routinely second point which i want to say is that you can, you should read the topic twice it, it is not that if you read the topic once and uh, just leave it it is absolutely waste of time you must read any topic twice and after reading it twice it is important only after reading it twice you going for highlighting the stuff if you straight away start highlighting you won't know what is important what is not important so you must read the topic twice highlight the important things only after reading the topic twice you have to have some form of summing up so you read it twice uh, you can make your own summary of all the important things that you without close the close the book and make your notes make a close some write it write a close summary of the uh, disease that you can done or you can make an audio you can try to teach someone and you can record that audio and that can act as a source for the second reading because reading harrison once is not the problem the problem really comes when you try to revise harrison because it is very voluminous and you won't know what is important and what is not important so having a material once you read the topic twice and you and you will have a good understanding of the topic and you should have some sort of consolidation at that point in the form of a summary or some audio form some or any form which you prefer you can do that uh, some other bonus tips which i could do is how do you take notes from harrison so her taking notes from harrison is very important but how to take notes smartly how i take notes is that i try to make questions from reading topic suppose you make a read a hypertension topic uh, and you, you can you know, instead of writing what is all important you can easily frame it a questions and you can write on the questions so it is just two words questions the form very short questions so you can have a set of 20 30 questions for a topic and though while answering these questions you can actively recollect the uh, what topic we have read and they can also act as a synthesis questions before you can go into the topic the second time so this is one way you can take the notes um, and again all the second method would be reading it twice and getting that mental model you should record only your mental model not everything that is given in the book if you are going to write everything that is given in the book you just going to make a second copy of the book you must read the topic twice create a mental model and record your mental model in the form of a written summary or in the form of an audio notes whatever your preference and then you should frequently revisit this uh, written form or the consolidated form then the, again that is the only be frequently revisiting you can get the maximum out of the book so what are the mistakes which i made while uh, before completing all these uh, two big volumes of fallacies uh primarily just reading once and thinking that this will stick into your brain is a big mistake you will forget harrison's rick because it's a very voluminous book and because of the high content you are going to forget sooner or later so it is important that you know this fact first and you should prepare accordingly secondly being not being consistent enough uh you will midway do you would be in a topic you will find lot of confusion should i read it uh, will it be worth it will it give me a good yield all these questions go on your mind it will not allow you to focus you have to be consistent it is a big book you require hard work and consistency and a dedicated effort before you can complete this uh, book so concluding uh it is not important that you just read the harrison reading harrison means it's not a point of uh, pride but well after you read the harrison it is important that you have what you take from the book that is what is important not reading the book is not important what you read and take from the book that is what is important you have to take the 
condensed essence from the book and you should store it and this and that should be frequently visited to have a better yield so i have given my insight of how to read this book if you found this uh, insights to be useful i would like you to subscribe to my channel and if you are having any queries of how to approach general medicine or any doubt regarding general medicine you can always feel free to comment uh, your uh, doubts in the comment section i will try to answer them and uh, share it with your friends who are planning to read this book and uh, thank you